Hi Lucy. Hi Trini. <laughs> what are we doing today? We're doing um, wardrobe management. Closet confessions, wardrobe management. Right, is there yes. such a thing? For me, it's the most important thing to have a creative and rewarding wardrobe. Okay, take me through. <laughs> this space we're in, which you've been in a little bit for Closet Confessions, is where I have all the clothes that I use every single day. Upstairs, where we do a lot of creative stuff, Lucy, is where I pull together things and I have rails and I think of ideas. Okay. So just imagine like I'm a painter and I have two studios. Oh, lovely. <laughs> all right, so Very whether nice. you have a wardrobe this big or two, four, eight spaces, or you're dotted around the house and you have drawers underneath your bed. This is about wardrobe management, how to store things, how to how to have a loving wardrobe. Okay, right, yeah, that's, jump in. That's what I call it. So I'll just take you around each cupboard. Okay. And then we can talk about it. Oh, nice. All right, so this cupboard is what I call my daily cupboard. And what I do in this cupboard once every Sunday or every couple of Sundays is I will put together some outfits that I will wear for the week. And this is kind of a crucial thing with anyone's wardrobe. It's finding a little bit of time to go into your wardrobe. We're going to talk about sorting by colour and things and just think, what can I try with something else? You might be inspired by one of my films, colour with colour. So I'll do that at the beginning of the week. And sometimes I want to think of what hasn't, you know, I haven't put together so I can show you a new outfit of the day. Many people might have dark wardrobes or a wooden double armoire, and you're always actually trying to see what's in there. So strip lighting from Ikea, wow. fantastic. But for me, jumpers, I don't wear that often. This is all, this is 90% of the jumpers I own. Colour coordinated. Colour coordinated, because jumpers for me are practical. They can be stylish as well but generally they're my dress down moment. Okay. But the colors I mainly wear them in, this is quite new, the reddish section, but I wear a ton of gray and I love a lot of these are the Zara jumpers. I put the bigger, fatter jumpers at the bottom. A little trick as well is when I fold a jumper, sometimes we can just do that kind of, let's just put it away, okay, like that. Yeah. But you leave that for a few months and your sleeves are all a bit, you know, knotted. So I'm really careful, and I'll do this against me, that I'll fold the jumper and I'll take that, make sure that's flat. We can all got time every day to fold a jumper correctly. And then I fold it like that. And um, because they're this way, I see every color. I don't see every shape, but I sort of know most of my jumps are round necked. I have some big, bold ones like these. I know which are the Zara ones because they stand out in Mar, those 19.99. And I know that in here I've got one polar neck and I know it's this one, actually. It's my dad's old polo neck, but I wear it kind of just as a memory of him. Oh, I was going to say, is there anything behind? Yeah, it's quite it a deep cupboard. Yeah, there's some little um, new things. Oh, no. But this is one of my favourite things. Because what you might notice is when my cupboard's open, there's a certain smell. Yes. And I used to use mothballs, but mothballs have a horrible smell for jumpers. And this is a little sort of... Um, potpourri from Santa Maria and Novella. It has pomegranate in it, pomegranate in it. But I think it's, there's certain elements to this. It's a clay pot infused with this uh, fragrance. It doesn't interfere with the fragrance I might wear every day, but it does keep moths at bay. And it's much nicer than those little sticky things that you hang up, yes. which have that weird smell. There's a lovely smell. And I think, you know, I could go across here because where we got a strong smell. Do you smell? Yeah, I can smell it. And that you want to, you want your wardrobe Ooh. to invite you in. Yes. And to just think, and to give it an, in this potpourri that I use from Santa Maria Novella, it has in it rosemary and thyme and lavender, things that wake you up and give you inspiration. And yes. I think that the smell of your wardrobe is important because if you open it and there's a bit of BO and there's an old trainer and a few other things that can give off unpleasant odors, it doesn't inspire you so much. Yeah. In this cupboard, I do have puffy hangers and I have my huggable hangers. And What's a, a puffy hanger? A puffy hanger is like a hanger, which um, it's a padded hanger. I call it a puffy hanger, padded hanger. I buy them in Amazon. They're like, uh, I can get them sometimes six pounds for 10. Depends where you go, but just padded and they hang clothes beautifully and it doesn't squidge them up. So for this creative element, I like padded hangers because it hangs things also that need space. On other um, wardrobe, you'll see that I have those huggable hangers only because it takes more. But depending on the fabrication is how much space it needs to breathe. Yeah. And if your clothes are all incredibly squidged, you'll never have fun in your wardrobe because you're always like, oh, where is it? And you'll lose things. And then 
the, my other, this is my biggest bugbear of anything, is hangers that come from a dry cleaner. Because those metal hangers mm. have fights with the things in your cupboard. You're going <laughs> yanking at 7 a.m. You're, you're late for work or wherever you're off to. And, and it's just a nightmare. So my favorite hanger is as a substitute, well, not a substitute, as an upgrade from a kind of metal hanger, is the huggable hanger. And I get these from Amazon. And they, the best ones are called huggable hangers. There's some imitation Chinese ones, but they snap quite easily. So if I'm really pulling something out roughly, they sometimes snap. So go for the original. And they're very good here so that I can put most fabrics of trousers over them and I don't get a line. Oh, yeah, and okay. That's, that's something that because there's nothing worse than pulling your trousers out in the morning, and they've got a line, and they have them. a crease. Yeah, and then the mini version because also I don't want too many wide hangers. So for my trousers that are just that wide, I have these mini ones, and I love these mini ones. They take up no space. Um, occasionally, I'll have ones like this. Um, because they, that needs to hang. But I always try and get the narrowest I can get. You can get some that are bigger and some that are narrower. But it, you know, trouser doesn't need more than that width. So try and find the thin ones. I get them from John Lewis. Okay. Down here, I've got the shoes I wear the most. And they are probably my Stellas, my Hogan trainer, which is quite dirty. We're gonna go in the product that cleans that in a minute. But I generally, you ask me a lot, I use Sif, my most popular thing. I use a bit of bleach sometimes here and then I'll wash these. They haven't been washed for a while, but I'll wash these laces as okay. well. I believe strongly in shoe trees, mainly because if they're made of cedar, they take away the smell of a long, hard workout in your shoes all day long. And they keep a shoe longer. I've had these Stellas. Cost per wear is probably a pound, uh, 50p actually. Um, I keep them really well and I buy these also in John Lewis and I have them for everything. These ones are out today, so that's their position. And then at the back, I just have my favorite um, Russell and Bromley trainer. And then I have my sort of Zara equivalent of the Hogan. It's not terribly different. You might get them on eBay. Um, it's slightly wearing a little bit here, but they're very good and they give nearly the same height. Do you see the height at the back? Yeah. It's probably about two and a half inches. Um, so those are my everyday shoes. I moved in with Charles about four years ago and before that it was all my own space. So when you share a space with somebody, um, you know, it's about how can you come home and put things away immediately. And Charles has literally very few clothes. I mean, he has two cupboards. You know, as women, we can kind of have a chair in our bedroom and things pile on the chair, and then they get creased and then we have to iron them when we need to iron them. So I really have got into a habit in the last four years of coming in and putting everything away. So, you know, I'll come in and have my handbag. I'll undo my handbag here. And then I come to this cupboard. Because this cupboard is just my favorite cupboard and if you have an opportunity to do drawers in a cupboard oh, it's amazing look at that ikea has this an equivalent but i think what i love about drawers is their flexibility to put in things that aren't clothing yes and there's a lot of knickknacks you might find another place in your house for all these kind of knickknacks but i usually come in and i always put my wallet here and then i'll put my glasses under there and i'll have my phone in my hand so this is probably my favorite area of my, of my cupboard system because it contains organizations for things so I always know where they are. And this is, this is very new, the way I've just done it. Um, in fact, I did it last night because I bought these from Muji. These are from Muji as well, little drawers. Over here is all my, I keep certain sentimental things, my You Magazine columns, um, sort of articles I found quite funny, Lila's reports, her little worst, you know, all the little plays she's been in, that kind of stuff. These are my old journals. This is um, my kind of, if I need a birthday card, it will be in here. Okay. Very good. Very impressive. All right. Down here. I mean, we could spend hours on this. Um, there's some jewellery which I actually had last travelling, so it's just, oh no, that's just one neck. I'm going to take that upstairs, that would go upstairs. So, sunglasses. This is something I actually haven't gone through forever, so I want to go through and just keep the ones I really use and get rid of the others. Yes. This is all my workout gear, but you know, when, I, when you go to work out, you think, just, oh my God, where are my socks, you know? So I keep them separate from my sock drawer. Ah. So these are just my workout socks. So in t I'm up in two seconds, I'm dressed and I'm out. And there's my workout bras. I have four workout bras, t-shirts there, and three pairs of leggings. One in the wash, one wearing, and one being dried. 
Great. Okay. Yeah. Felts. I always keep. This is something most people know, but I keep them in circles because then you can see them, and then they kind of ones like the corset belts. I keep in a line. Yes. I keep a little fan here because I love a fan when I go on holiday and I want to remember I have it and not put it somewhere where I can't see it. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a really good thing that you've got here is that you can see everything. I can see everything. And I think you might, another way you can do this is if you have drawers under your bed, you could get like Muji or equivalent inserts. Ikea do little lovely square boxes too yeah. and just put everything in instead of going like this and trying to find stuff. It's yeah. so nice. And this is a great under the bed kind of organization system. Then this is my little handbags and my pochettes. I collect pochettes, I love them. I have some incredibly old friends here. Like this is an old Pierre Hardy. You can see how much I've used it. That is a kind of thing where I'm thinking, is it the end of my love affair? Should I get rid of it? But I just can't bring myself to yet. Um, same would apply to my leopard print one from Celine. But I love it, and I, I like that trash look. It just has memories for me, and I think that if you have something like this, and it was really expensive when you bought it, and you still love the warmness of it, you know, sometimes you have a pristine outfit, having a slightly worn bag is quite nice. Yeah. And then I've got a mixture of bags here. I've got little, you know, these little Chanel bags I use when I travel, and I put in my phone and all my foreign currencies. Um, I've got little bags here, old vintage. Um, uh, Gucci one, a really old Prada one I just found for my storage. And I, the way to keep bags, this is another little thing I want to discuss because we can really squidge bags up and then you might have spent a lot of money on a bag and then if it's all squidged, it's lost its soul and it looks tired. So this bag is a really, I mean, this is like, I don't know if I should even keep it because it was like 20 years old, but I've always kept another bag inside it and it's a bag I don't really use much but it keeps its structure and I just, then it won't squidge. Really precious bags that I don't use much. So this is a bag of my mother's, um, which is a lovely old Hermes bag. And what I want to do now is I want to get the, the strap replaced because this bag is just in really beautiful condition, but the strap is very tired. And I wanted to see if Hermes are very good that way, but it probably cost me so much money to get it replaced, but I'm gonna see. But that I would keep preciously in yeah. this, you know, because I hardly ever wear it, but it's like a little heirloom. I mean, we spent so long in this cupboard, it could just be about this cupboard, this closet yeah. confessions. But there's certain things which you might be surprised how few of them I have, but I did a huge culling. And one thing for me is T-shirts. I don't wear T-shirts that often. Mm -hmm. um, and I have uh, here are short sleeve T-shirts and here are long sleeve T-shirts. And that's my T-shirts. These are sweatshirts. These are um, zip ups, zip ups, and pajamas, and these are very, very thin jumpers. Oh, okay. yeah, really thin that I'll wear in the summer. Yeah, um, and and pattern. You see, that's plain and pattern. Oh, these are little good hooks. You know, on the wardrobe we can. I used to bash in nails to hang things. So these I just get from Peter Jones, and they're really reinforced glue, yeah, but they, they stay stick. on well and they stick, and they can take quite a lot of weight. Um, and then these are the necklaces I wear most whilst we're here, because you always ask me about these necklaces, so I might as well just tell you. Um, these are my three favorite necklaces um, for all different reasons. So this is an old vintage YSL necklace I got in Paris. Um, I think it's probably from the 70s. Um, this is a little necklace that I got from a lady I was doing a makeover on in one of the Scandinavian countries and I can't remember I think it was Norway and I just loved it it just you know it's a little fish in perspex it's a very cheap chain but there's something I love about this and you all ask about it this is from Anina Vogel and this is my kind of um the first gift I ever got from Charles soon after I met him and everything on it has a significance um, of, you know, he chose them all. Oh, nice, so they're charms. They're charms, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And ironically, I have one upstairs and I, I, um, I swapped them out because I was given exactly the same with carefully chosen charms. This is why I feel I chose two good men um, by my husband the year before we separated. Aww. And so I alternate them because one I wear a lot with Lila and one I wear a lot with Charles. Yeah. Okay. So that's that covered. That's that one. Um, very quickly on these other ones. So this is shirts and sequins. Um, yes, we've so, seen this one. Yeah, we've seen this one before, but you can smell again. Come in yeah. and smell. 
Oh, yes. So, Serena Beauty, I have a lot of, and they're my, my pyjama things. I used to hang all the shirts up here, but then I found I was just wearing them as sets. So, what I've done is I've taken more of a colour story here, so I can be really inspired by colour, and this is when I talk about hanging things by colour, even hanging different articles of clothing by colour. It will inspire you to, to rejig your wardrobe, and generally I'll do... You know, I'm very anal about the color system. So I'll start lighter, go darker, and then go lighter, and then you can get the rainbow. If you start dark to light, you can't get that flow. This is how anal I am. Right. Um, then I'll put uh, metallics next to leopard. Then I'll have all my white shirts. Here is, um, I've redone this recently because I want to start wearing my summer long dresses in winter. So I want to begin to inspire myself. So here I've got all the long dresses I have, wintry and summery. And then I've got some pattern coats here. And what I want to do is do some pattern clashes. So I've put this here to be inspired and thinking, okay, if I wear this, could I wear that over it or that? You know, I just want to have them next door to each other. Yeah. Down here are all the shoes that I wear um, the most. And in the evening, this Robert Clergerie is a shoe shape that I have worn for about 10 years. They make it every year in different, um, different textures. I bought these in the sale um, before Christmas. Um, and they're the most comfortable high heel shoe I've ever, 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 ever worn. Let me just show you because they're just a little treat. I've kept them in this box, but I'll bring them out in the summer. Just, oh. I just thought that shoe will allow me to wear so many colors. And it's just, it's like you think a metallic, like a metallic shoe in the summer is brilliant to wear with everything, but that brings another element oh to gosh, it. I'm in love. Aren't they amazing? Wow, I know. In here, handbag storage again. So there's certain bags. Upstairs, I've got my bag collection, and I think bags are very difficult to get rid of, but I am in the process of a cull of bags. But these are bags that I wear every day, and having them out like this, and having them stuffed so they don't get squidged, yeah. and just seeing them all, it's a luxury that it's difficult to have if you don't have space. Yeah. And um, what do you stuff them with if they're not? I um... generally, if they're structured like this, they're fine. Yeah. If they're a bag like that, I just put a little bit of um, like tissue you get from shoes. Yeah. I put it in like that. Okay. Um, so I'll do that. Sometimes I'll show you another route. I do all these. I give them the space to breathe, and they're quite structured bags. So this is my favorite shape of bag. This is the one I got in uh, September from Prada or October. And then I was given that for Christmas. Oh, um, oh. Yes, I was given the white bag for Christmas. So many people knew how much I love white bag and, and Charles found out and he gave it to me for Christmas. Uh -huh. Remember to polish bags. You know, I use shoe polish on bags. So I'll do a brush and then I'll do a bit of shoe polishing. Yeah. But it's just then that bag is your friend for, if you look at that Hermes bag of my mother's, yes. you know, that bag is 60 years old. Yeah, wow. So um, there's no reason when you buy an expensive bag that it shouldn't be with you for life. Yes. And if you look after it, it will be with you for life. Definitely. Okay, I think that's it. Last one you've seen, it's the pants one. Um, and then very big bags I put down there. All my... Still tidy. Whoa. Uh, and then I put my jackets here, put my jeans here, and my sweat workout, not workout pants, but my, I do sometimes wear sweatpants and that's where they go, there's three pairs of them. What? Okay, <laughs> yes. So, that's it, Lucy. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you so much. You are welcome, darling. Let me go home and tidy my wardrobe. Oh! <laughs> Bye.